Um, I'm filming this because I've got something to tell everyone. Now, the doorway off of the hallway, that I showed you, Tony's brought lots of things in at the moment, so it's a bit cluttered. But the doorway off of the hallway, which I don't think anyone's ever seen this room, we used it as a bedroom for a while, and it's become a dumping ground, although it is my office, sort of. As you can see, there's an awful lot of junk in here. Things have been deposited where we haven't found homes for them yet. I'm also drying some washing in here as well because it's not easy to dry outside at the moment. Um, but yeah, so this is my project. So this is, those two windows there with the curtains drawn are the two windows at the front of the house that look out onto the high street and the square out there with the fountain. So we are in the main house. We're in the main house and those two windows there look out across to the square and the fountain and the children's play area. So, as you can see, I've got to find an awful lot of homes for things. I've chucked a lot of things out already. It was even worse than this because you could hardly get through the door. Um, we're going to rearrange the furniture in here. I'm going to put... I do have a desk of sorts over there. It's actually quite nice with a marble top on it. It's more like a dressing table, but I'll use it as my desk. And that's going to come over here in front of this fireplace here. We don't we don't use the fireplace in here. It does have an electric heater in this room, so it's quite toasty in here. But again, I've got lots of things to find homes for, things that have come from different rooms. Um, so yeah, it's going to be completely rearranged. So the desk is going to be moved from where it is at the moment in front of this fireplace here. And then we have a smallish wardrobe type cupboard over there. That's going to be going in this recess. Uh, this is actual double doors that go through to the main lounge area, but we don't actually use those. We've got a cabinet on the other side of that. And it suits us to keep these closed. It gives us more space to put furniture against the wall. So, yeah, that's the beginning of this project. So a little one, a little tidy up, a little bit of organisation. Some more furniture, hopefully, we'll be trying to find at least possibly another wardrobe. And then we're going to try and make this also into a guest room. So possibly a sofa bed we'll be looking for. Oh. I'll show it to you once we've moved the furniture around and it's a bit tidier. Really? And you're going to come off to where your plasterboard goes. There. That goes up against there. Like that so, there she is there. 10 mil off of there, which is lovely. There. That will be 10 mil off of there. There. Like that. What's that silly noise? That's my computer. Mm -hmm. 10 mil there, lovely. And 10 mil there. So what are you working out where the shower tray is going to be once the plasterboard wall's in place? Yes, yeah, that's it. Okay. Oh, what, so that you can see where to attach the, the shower cupboard. waste? Make the cupboard. That's, that's already... Oh, boxing in over there? Yes. Okay. Um, that's where she's going. Yeah, because nothing is square, is it? So, yeah, it's definitely not square with that wall that's here, is it? Just a little level, please. Top. A lot of things to think about. What? A lot of things to think about. Yes, that's a small space. Okay. So that's the outside of your plasterboard? That's the outside of the plasterboard. 
Excellent. I'm back in my office again, is it? In my dumping ground. <laughs> okay. Yep, nothing is square, so we have to try and make it as square as we can. So, obviously, the new wall that you're building is um, square because the basin's going to be in the corner here. And the shower tray is going to be next to it. That should be square. So, I mean, that is completely not square over there, that alcove. And we are boxing in the bottom of the alcove because there's no point in having it there because we won't be able to use it. It will be behind the shower tray. You know, see, that's totally that not square. Right, I've come to Brico Depot. Um, Tony went and bought loads of stuff the other day for the bathroom, but unfortunately they didn't have our basin in stock, so I've had to come to a different one in Bourges. Right, I found the bathroom department. Just to find someone to come and help me. Right next to the sink that I want, there's a box that says call for help. I think it says call for an assistant. <laughs> I didn't see that, so I went off and found someone. I'm in Brico in Bulls. There's three shops here. They actually do the windows and doors in here. They look as if they're probably similar prices. They do a lot of things in here, like even the gates and the front doors and stairs, yeah, balustrades, yeah, an awful lot of doors, interior and exterior. Oh, and they also do these canopies. Actually, that's not a lot of money. I love that one at the top there. That's 280 euros. I really like that. Mm. Yeah, lots of things for Tony to come and have a look at. Oh, they also do the wooden shutters in here and the um, PVC ones. Now I've come back into what is going to be my office come workroom come spare guest bedroom um and have been working on it not so as you'd notice but we have rearranged the furniture slightly i've got my desk there and we have put some wardrobes in the corner there in the alcove um but yeah i've sorted a lot of stuff out already things have been boxed up and I'm trying to find houses trying to find homes for everything is difficult but there's just so much stuff everywhere you look there's stuff I've also got to organize the cupboard out in the hallway which I can't do at the moment Tony's out there working which is full up with a lot of my arts and crafts stuff um, office stuff uh, I need to dig out my um, treadmill from under that lot it's been used as a coat hanger at the moment <laughs> and then things keep arriving that are being used for the bathroom as you can see so yeah still a long way to go although work has started so let's go and see in the meantime what Tony's up to out here outside the door Tony's working on the bathroom oh I think we just caught him at a very interesting bit. Whoops. <laughs> A 
and Tony is not a plumber. He hates doing plumbing. And he always has to make sure that he's done everything perfectly. So uh, it's always a worry. When you turn the water on, that it's going to leak. But he's done it a few times. He does get a bit of advice. So, but there's a lot of pipes to think about. He's run all the waste pipes there. He started running the supply pipes from the old hot and cold supply, which was up there. And these are all going to be inside the false wall that uh, we're going to erect afterwards, or Tony's going to erect. So, obviously, we've got the, the water's cut off at the moment, so it's got to be reconnected. With the new supply running over to the sheet, that's got to be redirected. And it's got to be redirected to where the basin is and where the shower is. Uh, this is the cupboard which is full of more stuff to be sorted. Oh my word, I've got to find homes for this or sort this cupboard out. It's a bit awkward to get to at the moment because there's lots of tools and things in the way. So you're using end feed fittings, Tony? Yes. And putting your own solder in it? Yes. So it's not like the old fashioned Yorkshire fittings. But we've tried the plastic pipe before with the French system. We bought all the tools for it and that, but we weren't too happy with that because we had some leaks. So sometimes it's better to stick with what you know. And Tony is a pipe fitter by trade, not a plumber. Oh, he's used to working with much bigger pipes. Okay. Do you need my assistant, uh, assistance, Tony? No. no. Sure. Okay, you don't need a plumber's mate then. <laughs> So you'll need my assistance when you send the water back on, won't you? Oh yes. To go around and check. Mind you, all the connections that you've made today are in here, aren't they? Um, yes. There won't be any other parts of the house to check. No, hope not. We do have particularly high water pressure here, don't we? Which is good in some respects, but it does worry you when you switch the water back on um, that it's going to leak. Okay. Right, I'm filming in the sheet at the moment. Um, it's a bit noisy next door because Tony's carrying on with work in the new bathroom in there. But I'm filming in the sheet because I've got something to tell everyone. What I need to say to everyone is there's, there's quite a few people that have asked about the restaurant and how it's going and it's actually going really well. I haven't filmed in there. I don't obviously want to disturb people's evening out and their leisure time so um, I haven't filmed in the restaurant um, apart from a few little clips of ourselves eating in there when the family came over. What are you having? How big are the chips? <laughs> are they not McDonald's chips? They're, they're homemade chips. They're very nice. So, what would you like with your chips, Olivia? <laughs> what would you like? A homemade Scotch egg with chips. No, Scotch egg. Scotch egg. Okay. 
Garnish. Garnish. Well done. <laughs> now, we took over the restaurant in the summer. We opened it in August at the end of the season last year and it's been doing really well. A lot of people have asked me how it's going and yes, it's been doing really well. Um, we very quickly found out that it was going to be a lot busier than we thought and our friends that we started the restaurant with, they could see the potential and they wanted to open it a lot more hours than we did, a lot more days, a lot more lunches and evening sessions which on mine and Tony's part turned out to be a lot more work than we were expecting. Don't, don't get me wrong, we knew it was going to be hard work. But when we decided to go in with our friends, we thought it was probably just going to be open on the weekends. But then we very quickly all realised that um, it was going to be a very good business and very busy. So our friends decided that they wanted to open on more days. Um, for lunchtime sessions and evening sessions uh, which was going to be far too much for me and Tony because um, we've got other things to be getting on with we weren't getting any work done on the house so our friend's son William he came and helped at the restaurant and he was really keen so we discussed it and William was bought into part of the business and so between them they they bought our half of the business from us so we we're all quite happy with that arrangement and obviously we're now customers at the restaurant rather than working at the restaurant. Um, we're still here to help out. I mean, Tony was there, for instance, helping um, to clear the grease trap because um, there was a little bit of a problem with the grease trap on the drains the other day. So he went over and helped out and he quite enjoyed it. Uh, because the pressure's not on now to do so many hours, he can do that. He can go over there and he can enjoy helping out for a few hours. So we're quite pleased about that arrangement. Uh, we knew it was going to be hard work when we took it on, but um, as I said, we thought that it would probably only be open on the weekends and that between us we could manage that. But then it's going to be a really good business. It's doing really well, even though it's quieter now. And everybody said, oh, it'll go dead, it'll go dead. Well, it hasn't gone dead. It's, gone, it's quietened down a bit, and obviously Christmas and New Year anywhere in the world is going to be quiet. People have spent money on Christmas and they don't come out so much. But they've started doing some takeaway, very special takeaway burgers and chips and um, an Angus steak burger, for instance, and fish and chips. And it's been really popular, as well as the, still the regulars that are still coming in. So I think it's really, really going to fly this year. Um, it's been problems with the restrictions, although that hasn't stopped people coming in either. So I'm really pleased for them. I'm really pleased for us. It was a lovely experience while it lasted, uh, but we are no longer involved with the restaurant apart from being still being friends and still being customers. Well, we're in the restaurant and we've come out for our friend's birthday. Tony has an Aberdeen Angus burger and I have a chicken burger. We're actually in La Fontaine. Oh, clocks. No. That's 20 euros, that one. That one's quite quirky, look. A band of fries. 23 euros. <laughs> 